guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be going over 10 eyeshadow palettes that I plan on using this spring. The intent of this video is to inspire you to pull out palettes that you already have in your collection or maybe give you some inspiration for some new palettes you might want to purchase and rock this upcoming season. I failed. I forgot to do winter. I'm kind of upset at myself, but spring is one of my favorite times to pull palettes for because I'm all about the pretty light bright makeup so I have a mixture of everything here from high-end to luxury to new to old so we have lots of options I picked 10 palettes and if you don't know these palettes I literally keep within reach for me during the season so that I am actually when I'm wearing makeup not in camera I'm reaching for these palettes I totally recommend you doing that as well it's really fun so my vibe for spring 2022 is light pastel washes of color. So very similar to the look that I'm wearing today. Just to give you an example, I did a purpley eye. So just these quick washes of color that aren't too bright or too opaque, but kind of liven up the face and, and fit kind of the theme of the season. So the first two palettes I have are gonna be brand, brand new ones, but I definitely plan on using them because they are truly spring palettes. So the first one that I have is the Hindesh palette, the Mono Chromance. This is the palette that I am currently wearing on my eyes. If you take a look at the palette, you can probably guess which shade I used. I used a mixture of both the lighter and the deeper purple shade to get this look. Now I'm still kind of gathering my final thoughts on this palette. I think it's a good palette. I don't think it is spectacular. You can actually see I'm getting a little bit of hard pan on that purple here after using it today. But I really, really like this, but this is not for somebody who really loves bright colors. This is quite sheer, but I did have a lot of fun mixing the shades today, playing with the depth of the purple. I do really like it. I also use a mixture of a couple of shades for my blush today as well. I definitely plan on playing with this this spring because I think you have a lot of options, some beautiful cheek colors, as well as being able to play, of course, with these bottom rows here. So I will be using and abusing this one this spring. And the next one that I have, you guys know, is a palette that I will be using this spring. This is Natasha Denona's new pastel palette. Of course I had to use it. I paid a lot of money for it. So this is what it looks like. Uh, yeah, as you can see, pastels are the trend for this spring. We've had a couple of pastel palettes come out already and this one is a really great one. I find the colors very easy to use. Really great for beginners. Again, it's not going to give you a huge punch of colors but I think every shade in here works really well and does what it's supposed to do. I've done a full review on this as well as a three looks, one palette if you want to get a little bit more inspiration. Pastels are not my jam. I have not been super obsessed with this palette but I do think I am going to reach for more pastels this time of year but I'm not into doing really intricate pastel looks like you saw me doing with this Natasha palette just to get familiar with it as well as inspire you guys if I'm wearing pastels it's going to be like this and simple so this is kind of like a one to two shade type of palette that I'm going to be using I'm not really going to use too many shades I like the simple monochromatic pastel kind of looks all right we are now getting into the older palettes that I dug into my collection for no particular order just done through alphabetical of the brand name. So the first one that we have is ABH and a palette that I definitely want to use more this spring is the Carly Bible palette. This palette didn't really get its moment for me when it first initially launched. You know, it launched right after the Jackie Ina palette and then the ABH Norvina collection came out. But this palette is so stunning and it really got lost in the sauce. You know, there was too much going on that nobody could really appreciate it. So my goal is to appreciate this one this season but it really is a really fabulous spring palette you have some lilacs you have some pinks purples and neutrals as well and i really think the quality on this is very pretty so this is kind of my vibe for the spring as well not quite as pastel as the first two so honestly i think i'm a little bit more comfortable with this one so i'm excited to pull this one out okay we have another pastel palette and i had to bring this out this has been in the front of my mind to use this spring i love this palette it's affordable this is the bh cosmetics Lost in Los Angeles palette. A lot of you have actually been comparing this palette to the Natasha Denona pastel palette because these are two very different price points. I think that this palette has really phenomenal quality. The pastels here are definitely much more punchy. So when I want a more kind of colorful look, this is the one that I'm going to go for. If you don't know my sales on BH Cosmetics, absolutely love their formulas, particularly in these 16 pan square pan palettes. I think the quality is incredible given the price. I love that there's a white 
light here so that you can even really play with the depths of the mattes as well. And the shimmers are super stunning. So this is just a plain old fun palette to use for the spring that I definitely plan on using. You can get pink looks, purple looks, green looks, and I really do believe that this palette does carry a little bit more pop, punch, and depth compared to the Natasha Denona. I don't know if I'd prefer this over the Natasha Denona. I'd have to play with this a little bit more and the Natasha Denona. But I know I absolutely love this one, especially for the price. Like, it's worth so much more than you pay for it. This one is a really perfect spring palette. I've been talking about Huda Beauty a lot lately, so this one was on the front of my mind. I do want to pull out Mercury Retrograde because they killed it with the mattes in here. I think it's so beautiful. While there are some pastel tones, you also have some depth that you can bring in for the evening as well. And the lid shades in here are out of this world. I believe you can get this at a really great discounted price as well if you are interested in this. This is one of my all-time favorites, if not my favorite Huda palette. So if you don't own it and you're interested, now is the time to buy it. I am honestly worried that she's going to discontinue this. And it's, it's one of the best palettes. It's so fun, but you can still get wearable looks. If you like purpley, pinky kind of palettes, you will really, really enjoy this one. Also, I just need to point out, I'm trying to hide these as I'm speaking, but I do have a nail appointment today. Um, Yeah, I've been like picking out my gel polish because it's been catching in my hair and annoying me. All right, I also have this palette right here from Huda Beauty. This is the Nude Light palette. So here it is. How pretty is this going to be for spring if you like the pinky tones and the very light lilac tones and it's a great little portable palette. So that's why I did want to have this because it's really great to travel with and it's just nice to have something small, something that doesn't offer too many colors so that you can really create a look very easily. So this is one that I plan on using. By the way, I did just upload a ranking Huda Beauty palette. So if you want to know kind of where this stands in the line, definitely recommend checking that video out. This is from their nude collection which is one of my all-time favorite collections. So this is a really great palette. Because I am a repeater, this one is going to be in every single spring palettes video I will come out with because this is the number one spring palette for me. This is the Lime Crime Venus XL2. Once you take a look at the color story, you will see it is so unique. There really isn't any eyeshadow palettes out there that are quite like this. As many of you said, this should have been what Natasha Denona Retro was, just given what the mini retro was. And yeah, I'd love to see a color story very similar to this in Natasha Denona's line. It's so unique. The sage green tones are absolutely beautiful, even though there are so many green tone palettes coming out because it is a trendy color. Nobody has done greens quite like lime cream here and the dusty pinks are everything to me so this one is a super fun one if you're looking for a unique palette I even recommend regardless of it being an old palette that you have this in your collection just do to how unique it is. Sorry guys, the sun is coming in and out. <laughs> okay, the next palette that I have is from Odin's Eye. This one is a little bit more brighter than the others, but I think it could be really, really fun if you do it right. This is the Saga of Freya, uh, chapter two cat with golden carriage from Odin's Eye. I love the packaging and look at this. So if you're looking for some fun blue tones as well as you have some fun orange pops here, this is a good one to pull out just because it's so fun and it's so different. I don't have a lot of palettes that have a color story quite like this. And of course the shimmer formulas from Odin's Eye are just incredible. You will have so much fun with this palette. So just to be a little bit different, to step outside my comfort zone, this is a palette that I want to have out for this spring. I think I will have fun with those pops of oranges as well. I did pull a second Odin's Eye palette just because this one also screams spring. I didn't get too much use out of it, so this is one that I want to use some more. This is the Alba 2 Mini Forest palette. It is a six pan palette. It's kind of similar to the palette that I just showed you because there are the blue tones, but there's also some green and yellow and gold. You can actually get quite a wearable look with this as well as those fun springy pops. Something about this really does kind of remind me of an Easter egg and then you also of course have the really great shimmer quality from Odin's Eye. And again, going back to that smaller palette, I like that it's smaller. I like that you can get more of a simplistic look. You don't have to think too much about what colors to mix where. So this is one that I definitely plan on 
pulling out a little bit more this spring. All right, guys, we are on to our absolute final palette that I have to talk about today. I felt like I didn't have enough pinks and neutrals, and this is a palette that definitely hasn't gotten a ton of use for me. So I thought that the Tarte Tartlet Juicy Palette would be perfect. I think they relaunched kind of a condensed version of this. I know that this one is no longer available, but it's quite a doable palette. It's not necessarily anything that you can't get a hold of. Like I said, my spring collection here was missing some neutrals. This has that towards the bottom, but it also has some fresh wearable pinky tones as well that I think are going to be very flattering and wearable for the springtime. I'm not super in love with this palette. If you've seen my reviews on this, I think it's great. It certainly gets the job done. The palette works, but there's nothing that stands out to me. It's just kind of a middle of the road formula and quality, but I think it's a really great collection of colors that I am looking forward to wearing to this spring that aren't, you know, like pastel. This brings it down and makes my collection for the spring a little bit more neutral, and that is why I chose to add that one. And that is it. Those are the palettes that I'm going to make an effort to reach for this spring. I want you to go into your collection and think about what do you want to reach for more? How can you step outside of your comfort zone? Pull some palettes that you aren't necessarily comfortable with, but you feel like you could have fun with this time of year, because this is what I'm using. Hopefully I've inspired you to do that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Comment down below the palettes you plan on using, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.